beautiful people welcome back to my channel my name is Amanda and today I'm gonna just do a little get ready with me as I chit chat about some stuff I thought it would be nice um, since this is a baby channel and I have some new subscribers to you know kind of introduce myself and talk a little bit about my background and everything um, and I have to get ready for the day for a couple of appointments and so I thought I would start my day um, I finally had a day off to myself we had the holidays and so there's a lot of visitors and then on the days off then we had to clean and then then Christmas was over and New Year's happened and then the travelers visitors left and so then we had to clean some more and put all the decorations away and so I feel like things have finally just settled down and I can actually start <laughs> recording again and spend some time recording, editing, and uploading. So I do hope that um, any of my new subscribers, that you guys aren't too um, annoyed that the there has been a uh, lack of videos lately. Life has been really good for me lately and um, you, most of you don't know who I am. I would say 100% of you don't know who I am. But um, so my name is Amanda and I am in my mid thirties and I'm a registered nurse. I uh, currently work as an oncology nurse and it's something that I found myself really liking. And so um, I wanna get nationally certified to administer uh, chemo. I mean, I can, I'm certified to administer chemotherapy, but I want to become an oncology certified nurse. But I originally created this YouTube channel, if you can't tell by, you know, my Gmail um, associated name. I originally created it for um, documenting or vlogging my um, experience with um, competition prepping. I really got into fitness. Um, when I needed, when I realized that I, back in like 2014, like just before I turned 30, I had had progressively gained a lot of weight. And I can go into that story a little bit later. In fact, I will when I do my Beachbody series. Um, but I decided that I was going to lose um, 30 pounds to get myself back down to a healthy body weight for my frame. And um, I did it with a Beachbody program and no, I wasn't a hun at the time trying to do it. It was just strictly doing the at-home exercises and it wasn't even involving Shakeology. But um, in the process of doing that and then stalling and getting up and plateauing, um, I honed in on my nutrition and I enlisted my brother's help. He's a personal trainer down located down in San Diego and he did online personal training. He still does. And he really formulated a plan with me, individualized to me to, to reach my goals. And I ended up losing almost 41 pounds in just over a year. It definitely hit my 30 pound goal by my next birthday. Um, but in the process of doing that, I really fell in love with fitness and just really, you know, being healthy um, and within my capabilities. I have been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disorder since I was 19 years old. My father has it and what it appears to look like in a lot of the family photos is his grandmother had it. I don't know if his parents had it. He was raised by his grandparents. But um, there is a, when I did a, I did a 23andMe um, genetic testing a couple years ago and it said that there was a genetic disposition for being, um, for developing rheumatoid arthritis, which I was like, well, that's convenient because I 100% have it. <laughs> so I um, really liked that I was able to figure out how I could implement fitness and my goals and being like really um, like toned, have very low body fat percentage and everything. And, and, and develop lean muscle um, within the abilities of my body. Um, because prior to when I would have my initial rheumatoid arthritis flare-ups, I'll just call it RA from now on, I would get, I had a lot of joint damage, um, like my thumb right here, it's like very distorted considering like, like this is my, this is my thumbs up on the side and see how it doesn't really go up all the way. Um, you know, and, th and these, these, this hand, my right hand was the most 
impacted in my wrist and my feet. Um, I did like the fitness aspect of it, of, of managing it and that's just basically very, being very proud of my body's ability. Um, I definitely felt better when I was more fit than when I was overweight um, as far as my symptoms. And that can go with a lot of chronic diseases and especially arthritis. Being overweight when you have arthritis just puts a ton of pressure on the joints that the body really struggles with. And so being at a healthy body weight is a definitely a component of experiencing a little bit of relief. Not, not everything, but um, anyways, I digress. So when I lost a lot of the body weight, you know, once I got to my goal weight and then beyond, I was like, well, what's the next step? Like maintenance, I guess. But I thought, well, maybe I can just see how far I can go with my body as far as like building muscle and everything and potentially doing a bikini competition. So I had to actually put that on a back burner because a uh, life situation changed and I was no longer like training and following my nutrition plan. Um, and so I put that on a back burner for a couple years. It just never really happened. And in the meantime of dealing with all of that, I just, and not training and not following a plan and everything, I um, slowly gained weight back. And I also had a RA flare up because stress can do that. And I wasn't managing my RA with any medications at that point. And so, and I had just moved, so I didn't have an established provider or anything in, in the, my new town. So I had to get my RA managed back in order before I could, before I felt like comfortable going to the gym. I was still going to the gym, but I was doing a ton of modifications. Um, so anyways, long story short, um, when I got to a point where my RA was managed and it was feeling good and I was in, you know, not, no longer hobbling like a duck because I could actually bend my toes without having pain and um, I could grip again, I decided to um, hire my brother again and start working on that goal again for a bikini competition. And this was back in 2000, early 2018 and I went ahead and did a whole um, documentation on that on my Instagram. And that's when I started kind of vlogging my videos. I would do a lot of car talks. I called them like car chats or something like that. And that was because I would have to commute 20 minutes to go to the gym. And so I had a lot of time to talk, <laughs> a lot of time to think. And then I decided, oh, maybe I'll just think out loud. So I did a lot. I, I recorded a lot of those videos with the intention of uploading them. And I did, you know, a couple videos on this channel with that content, like very few though. And I, I uploaded like a chicken salad, um, my go-to chicken salad recipe that's higher in protein, lower in fat and carbs, of course. And then I just got so busy. It got like pretty overwhelming and I didn't upload anything. And then the competition happened and because I was doing everything on my own I didn't really have a lot of content of the actual show and I was finishing up my bachelor's degree online at the exact same time like the the month of so that summer leading up to my competition in that mid-August I was in my capstone class and having to do this big project plus I was like dieting down and increasing cardio and cutting carbs for my show and it was like overwhelming. I never uploaded anything and so nothing was very consistent with that because I just felt overwhelmed and I got and then personal things came up um, in, in the family and it was really really stressful and I found that after I did the competition was a definitely a highlight of my fitness uh, journey um, and I got in third place with that show which isn't that bad. It was a small, I do um, natural uh, competitions because I don't want to be compared next to someone who does performance enhancing drugs. But I was also like the older lady competing among a bunch of younger girls because they divide the shows into like age groups, height groups and age groups. And so I was considered tall for five foot four. I don't know when that was ever tall, but I was considered tall in this group and then um, but then I was also older, so I was not being compared to people on steroids or performance enhancing drugs, but I was being compared to like a 19 year old and for someone who's comes from weight loss, who's lived, um, 
at least, you know, 15, 14 years more longer than the youngest chick, um, I have like, you know, stretch marks and cellulite <laughs> and loose skin. And so it wasn't like the best feeling of what I was being compared to, but it was still a great experience. Um, but once that show was over and then I literally like right before the show had finished my course. And so I was graduated and I had like no more school. I just finished the competition and like, all this family crisis was going on. And I was like, I am miserable. <laughs> so I was, I seriously found myself in a depression and like that's been on and off for a lot of my life, especially when I was first diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, the depression really sunk in because it's a, a forever disease. Um, but it was, I definitely having so much going on to suddenly having like nothing going on, but still having a little bit of like this stressor, it was a lot for me. And so I just didn't upload anything. I thought, oh, maybe I can upload some things and it'll just be like back. I can just not back time it, but like still put it in chronological order. It's just that it wouldn't be like in real time. So like the show in August might get uploaded in December type of thing. I just decided not to do anything. That was where I was at mentally. So my apologies if that sounded like it would be, have been interesting for you, but I just for personal reasons decided not to upload any of that. So that's why the, the channel Long story short, that's why the channel is like older than the video uploads. Um, and then at that point, uploading any videos, you know, this year to, or we're in 2020 now for 2019 would have been really old because I did another competition because my, my brother and I decided, okay, well, we didn't really, we weren't really satisfied with the results of the first show. And from the very beginning, my plan for going into that first show was to really prep myself mentally and physically for the show I wanted to do, which was a lot more local. And so we just, we developed a plan and said like, we're just going to make it undeniable that I should earn first place because I put in the work. I'm not just like this cardio bunny who won because I have youth on my side and can was never overweight in, in their life, but like to, to have like the muscle development and the leanness that it just made it undeniable. Um, so I did do my second show and I ended up getting like first, I got first place. This was back in mid May of 2019, you know, starting February of 2019, I, um, started the prep again. So we did a longer prep, which helped me lean down more, um, and I got first place and I can show, I could insert pictures of like the results of that. And like also a comparison of what the first show was compared to the second show. Um, and again, I did it all myself. I did my own tan, no, second show I did sign up for a tan and it was, it was just okay. But the first show I did my own tan through Pro Tan, but I did my makeup in both shows, makeup and hair. And I also did my own bikini. I ordered the bikini from Angel Competition Bikinis, the first one, it was just a basic one, they were cheapest. And I put my own rhinestones on it. And the second show I put a lot more, I like totally blinged it out. And I got the rhinestones from Etsy. Um, I think it turned out great. So I like to do crafts, which my boyfriend was like, you know, it just adds extra stress on you when you try to do a lot of DIY stuff. But I enjoy it. It's like downtime. It's like Zen time when I can just do something creative it like, even though it's time consuming, it's very relaxing for me. <laughs> so yeah, I did the show. I was like qualified for pro for this organization and I could have done a, like a pro show. Um, but I went on vacation, a prepaid vacation, like two weeks after the show, which, and it was a cruise and we got the all you can drink package. And, you know, the professionals say that that's the worst thing that you could possibly do when you're coming off of a competition is to like do anything where it's all inclusive because you basically just overdo it. And I didn't do a proper um, reverse diet. I mean, I ate, I ate pretty well the two weeks following the competition and still trained and everything, but I had just, I had previously put in my notice and I was supposed to start a new job immediately following my vacation. And so I was kind of just overwork and at my previous job and um, 
looking forward to my vacation. <laughs> and so I was, you know, I was doing all of that. We went on vacation, all inclusive, just totally like ate and drank my heart out, which, you know, I didn't like gain a substantial amount of weight. I was a little bloated to say the least. But then I started my new job and I was still trying to figure out how to go to the gym, but my new job was, I went from inpatient oncology to outpatient oncology and like the hours are different and you'd think I would, I was just adjusting. Just to add more stress, my boyfriend and I decided to buy a house. <laughs> and so we started buying, you know, we put an offer on a house early July and you know, the vacation had ended mid-June, started a new job mid-June, put an offer at a new house mid-July. And I just told myself, I'm not gonna put any extra stress on myself. I'm just gonna take this time off. Call it what it is, call it a vacation of my training. Um, and a lot of the um, judges that were doing shows following the show that I won pro on, they kept wanting me to join on their shows so that I could, you know, the more members, the better. They have more you know, more to compare to and makes it more of a competition, but I just wasn't in any shape to compete. Um, not that I was out of shape, I just wasn't, you know, as lean, because full disclaimer, stage lean is not sustainable. That's just a super low body fat percentage and it's just not sustainable. And I would never expect myself to be that lean for the rest of my life or for a good part of my life. It's good to you know get down to if competing is your goal, but you have to put yourself at a sustainable body fat percentage. Um, and also, I love carbs, so <laughs> I and I don't particularly care for cardio. Um, but the thing is, is when I took my little break from you know committing to the gym, I didn't give myself a break from eating better, and I just ate whatever I wanted. And that and then so slowly but surely the weight. Um, started up again so so that's really how my channel was first supposed to be it was supposed to be you know a fitness channel which is why it's you know amanda fit and healthy and that goes along with my um, instagram handle if you want to follow me on instagram um i also post like you know just pictures of my pomeranian um and you know life stuff on on that as well and i advocate for rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune dis disorder disease um, people. Definitely something if you're interested in that and my journey a little bit more, you can um, you know, follow me there. I also really kind of have enjoyed in my downtime, you know, looking at some of these um, anti-MLM contents and um, I've been following them on my other um, YouTube account, Gmail account. You know, I've followed a lot of these anti-MLM uh, people on YouTube and I decided, you know, I'd like to I have some stories and I'd like to be able to share those Especially if it helps spread the good word um, And so that's why I've uploaded a few of those and it's kind of went from being a fitness account to you know anti MLM, but I still do hope to put a little bit of my my fitness journey in there here and there um, And let me know if that is something that you'd be interested in um, I'm not like a personal trainer, although that is something that I thought I would want to do just to get some extra income. Now that I have a mortgage, <laughs> it might be nice to be able to quit my per diem nursing job for a little bit of um, something that I extra enjoy doing, um, which is, you know, physical fitness, although that would be focusing on other people's physical fitness. So who knows how that will happen. Um, but just to have a little bit of... Um, variety in the channel um so if you are here just for the strictly anti-mlm that will be there will be some content here but it's not going to be i don't think it'll just be fully that so we'll see um as of for 2020 you know people like make resolutions all the time and um my intention back in like september october was to kind of get at a really good body fat percentage from me regaining weight was to kind of be more focused on on my health and fitness, making that more of a priority in my day-to-day -day life um, for my birthday, which was in early December. But yeah, again, my focus wasn't there, even though I said so. And I tried doing something in November, some sort of challenge thing in November through one of my brother's um, colleagues programs. And I got sick and 
yeah, it just, it just seems like one thing happens to another. So I did make New Year's resolutions and mostly I'm having a vacation, another cruise vacation coming up in the end of April. And I'd really like to get into um, a more comfortable body fat percentage for that vacation. Something about being extra confident in a bikini helps the vacation go by so well. Um, but you know, all power to the girls who wear bikinis regardless of their size. I've always been self-conscious of my weight and it's very like disordered in that regard because of just how I grew up and the things that were said to me regarding my weight as a child. And it just really just mind with you into adulthood. And so for me, covering up my stomach has always been the thing to do. And even when I was slimmer, I would get like those two piece bathing suits that still would hide this, the middle. Um, so one of the things that compelled me to do the bikini competition was that you had to actually be like, I would have to force myself to be in a sparkly bathing suit on stage in front of strangers. And what I hate about the bikini competitions is that you are being judged in a sparkling bathing suit in front of a bunch of strangers who don't know you and don't know your story and don't give a shit about your story. They're just looking at you and comparing you to the person next to you. And so it was like, I loved it for what I was able to do with myself and like my own personal journey with it. I hated it for what it actually is. I do like competitions for celebrating muscles and celebrating what the body can do and the physique and you know the determination that people have and I just I hate the the subjective judging because it's just in especially other organizations it can just be very yucky. Um, and I don't understand why some people like to make careers out of it. I mean, I get it if they are winning and they get a lot of money, they get a lot of sponsorships and stuff and they look good all year round. But again, like I said, being at a low body fat percentage for long term is not sustainable and it messes up, messes your metabolism up. So, so anyways, I'm going to be um, just sharing a little bit about, you know, my current stats. Um, I've been logging my meals and my fitness pal. I do like to do my calories based on macros because macronutrients, which are carbs, fats, and proteins make up your total calories, well, plus fiber and stuff, but they make up your daily calories. And so really it's always a calorie deficit. So for right now, I'm just trying to be consistent in reaching my goal, um, daily calories and, um, weighing myself to see like if that's helping. But I am one thing that you would know if you do follow my Instagram and my stories on Instagram, I'm a huge advocate for non-scale victories. And it's like really like, okay, what does this, what, how do the clothes feel? How do you feel like physically? Do you feel well? Do you feel achy? Do you feel so, you know, like those are all things that I think um, are better indicators of how you're doing health wise and towards your goal than the scale because you know a, a pound of fat is the same as a pound of muscle but the muscle is going to take up less you know mass in your body than the fat and that was the thing is even though my I did gain weight and that's expected and I'm, I'm about you know the same weight that I was this time last year except it is mostly fat and I can tell because I am so uncomfortable in a lot of my non-gym clothes, but even some of my gym clothes that I was wearing, I was wearing extra smalls in December last year because um, I was reverse dieting and it was like lean muscle, like with just, you know, an appropriate amount of body fat for being, you know, a surplus of calories in my reverse diet, but it was a lean muscle and I was, you know, and it was the peak of my off season um, reverse diet and I was wearing extra smalls and these tiny little like tank tops and just super lean as AF. And then, you know, then I went back into, you know, prep afterwards. This year I'm the same weight, plus or minus two pounds. And I, I can't even fit into an extra, I can barely fit into a small. It is just uncomfortable. The clothes are too tight. I'm just spilling over. And 
I just got to wear my, my mediums and more loose fitting gym clothes. And so that's the thing. It's like, it's just, it's based on how you feel. The scale really doesn't mean anything. It's a good calculator for, you know, overall progress, but ultimately you want to look at how you're feeling and how your clothes feel. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'll probably do like a darker lip color for my evening appointment, but how do you like this look? Is it all right? Oh, I gotta put some mascara on. Duh. So, <laughs> mascara is on. How do you like the look? I'm a huge fan of like pinup style makeup. And if you do like um, that kind of style, that, that style uh, mid-century look, um, if you follow the Cherry Doll Face, she has a lot of tutorials on makeup and hairstyles. And I actually did a photo shoot with her back in like 2015 when I had just started. I would, had just been on like Beach Body for, for a while as far as the workouts. And I had done a whole like photo shoot with her where there was a, a girl that she toured with did my makeup and then she did my hair and um and then there was a photo shoot afterwards and it was like it was really cool i i really love that and i don't think she's touring anymore necessarily um she's kind of doing something else with her career but she had done tours for a long time and that was a lot of fun and i really love that kind of look and my where i live they do a lot of these classic car shows in the summertime and I'm thinking I might want to kind of like dress up a little bit and potentially do some um, modeling or something um, with those classic cars. But again, I get like, I have like shyness. I'm pretty introverted. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it would, it would, it would take a lot of um, gusto for me to like actually do that <laughs> in public because I don't know. Um, Anyways, that's me rambling and getting ready. I'm going to probably do something with my hair, <sighs> change my clothes, and go do my appointment thing. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more content on not only just anti-MLM, but possibly fitness or my health and fitness journey and any RA stuff or um, life things, um, I can also go into some other, I don't know, leave suggestions in the box below <laughs> on what you might want to see. But um, I'm so happy that you've watched my video. And if you want to subscribe, I would love that. And I hope that um, you enjoy watching my content. Until next time, bye!